So we are now ready to start using uh, one identity job service containers. Just a brief information around what we're going to do. There are basically two ways to run a container when it comes to pass variables and sensitive data. Uh, one is pass the variables and consequently the sensitive data uh, when you issue the docker run command. But in the case, the variables will be exposed with the container itself. The other one is actually to hide this sensitive data into what Docker calls secrets. Um, secrets is a way to encrypt the sensitive data and make them available only for the container inside the container. Um, and it's definitely way more secure than running um, a standard container. But to make so, you got some requirements that are clearly exposed and, and, and discuss it at the docker documentation that required you to run um, a specific cluster called a docker swarm or if you are not um, on the docker you can run the uh, kubernetes cluster uh, we were going to use docker swarm for this uh, for the purpose of this demo so the first thing that we are going to create then um, is create a docker swarm in our environment and this is a pretty simple um, command uh, docker swarm in it initialized the docker swarm uh, we are not going in details uh, around the docker swarm that that could be retrieved from the docker documentation uh, itself uh, the docker swarm has been created now we are going to create the, um, the secrets so how we build the secrets and we pass the secrets so the secrets um, basically has a specific command the command will be docker secret create name of your secrets so name of your secrets and file where the secret is actually uh, retrieved um, so what we created is like um, a secrets folder you can actually um, look for the documentation more on this information and we created actually uh, files there that contains our information i pick up one of those files and in this one of the files we just set up um, for example, the queue name that we are going to use in our environment. So we are going to create them um, this way. So the first file we are going to create is the constring file. So docker secret create constring constring. You see that actually docker tell me, okay, I created a, a secret there so if i do docker secret and i show me my secrets it will tell me you have a variable named constring and i encrypted that data over there so i'm going to use my encrypted data i'm going to create the second secret for me it will be http pvd because i want to be sure that not everybody can actually log in on the docker job website when it will be running so I create, I get the password for my user, my allowed user on there. Then I do the same for my user, the name of my user. And finally, I got other two variables that I want to run, the queue name and the server name. And we're ready. So if I now do docker, docker secret ls, now all my variables are ready to be used. So as we saw, uh, now we got um, our secrets ready. Uh, for more information on that, you can absolutely point it to the Docker documentation where there's an example how to use sensitive data within Docker and how to create and use secrets within your environment, exactly as we just show it. Now, before I actually start using our job server, let's look a little bit at our information right now. So we just installed uh, one identity manager. So our environment is just based on the database and we just finished the installation. So if we look at the designer, uh, what we expect and that that is uh, the case is that the only server, the only job server that is actually defined in the, in the design is of course our SQL processing server. Uh, there's no job server in this environment. This also means that if we look at the job queue right now, that need to be done, need to be completed, and they're waiting for a queue name uh, that has the same name of our SQL processing server. So usually the steps are to install a machine, uh, a VM, a virtual machine eventually, 
uh, install the operative systems, install the job service, uh, configure the job service to run the, with this queue name and then wait for this task to be completed. But today we will going to use our simple containers. And um, so to do so, we will do something like docker run dash d that is detached and I will explain in a minute what, what it does. And then we will issue the, the other commands. So we are now ready uh, to run our job server. So what we are saying with this command is like, dear docker, please run a container in detach mode. So don't show me what the container does it, um, inside, but just run it. Um, just give me uh, an idea that actually the container started and that's it. Uh, then expose dash p uh, a specific port and container. I have a, a web application in that. I have a web page that I want to see and I want to connect that. So the internal port, the second one is the container, container port. And the first one instead is the port that I want to attach to. So it could be the same like in our case, or it could be a different port um, from a standard. And then finally, please dash V map a volume. So our secrets in our case and map it internally to the container. This is a Linux container. So show these as a run secrets and the same for the logs. So we will be able actually to see the logs from the container from outside the container without actually uh, the need to get into the container. And finally, obviously, please, um, run it this job server so we're ready we issue the command this time we see that actually created the detached created id and we issue the docker ps that says yeah okay is it running so what is going to happen well first things as always is that we are going to open uh, our web browser and we are going to um ask for that information okay and we will see all well, in our case in our environment actually this this is, could be reached as a local host that because um, everything that is run in the, uh, in the Docker Linux container in Docker for Windows, it will be exposed as a local host on your environment. I will start um, asking for the, this information and after things work, I should have a username and a password request. We set up before admin and admin, and we can see eventually later. And the job service actually is there. Um, and it seems to be run. So I can check the log files and see eventually that it's running. So if things work, then I come in my job queue and then I actually absolutely monitor the job queue and probably I will see in a minute, here it, here it is, tasks that have been created and tasks that are going to be executed by, uh, by my machine. Uh, and that means that I will basically complete the initial task of a configuration with one single command. Um, so while we are waiting, actually, um, then we will see basically that our container job uh, is still running uh, behind the scenes. Um, as explained before. And also what we can see is that if we point to the logs folders, as we saw before, then we have a logs. And in this case, probably we, we can have something around the container. Uh, it is that is called a job service. And it's basically creating. We are not using a, a private key right now, but actually it's, it's basically tell us that it's doing the top. You see that actually the job, the task are going to be clean up and everything is going to, to work. Um, and again, we, we see that. And we see appears, by the way, other, other uh, tasks related to another queue that is asking that is basically the name of our containers, the second and the real job server that we're going to ask. Um, last things while we are waiting for the task to be completed is that if now we do a new connection, we will see our job server created. And finally, in the um, in the designer, if we reload the data, we should be able to see uh, the job server that we just created. 